everyone welcome back to rts and welcome back to rearrange the stuff and up today we're going to talk about die cuts yes our beautiful beautiful uh, die cuts and ephemera pieces and ephemera packs and all the fun stuff yes now if you've been a long time scrapbooker and crafter you know that these have cycled because many 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 moons ago we scrapbooked with die cut shapes they weren't as pretty and as intricate as they are nowadays but yes do you remember the day when you would go to a local scrapbook store run as much paper as you could <laughs> through their die cutting machine and make your own die cut shapes now that was back in the day yes how fun okay now i do have some new scrapbookers to my channel and what we call die cuts are these packs of die cut shapes and they're basically like you would think of stickers but they're just paper there's no adhesive on them they're just loose okay loose shapes okay and then ephemera pieces or ephemera packs are basically the same thing as there are these flat die cut shapes and there's also sometimes sequins and in this pack i even have burlap buttons metal you can, yeah, you can get a variety. So ephemera basically will have some bulk to it, but some of your die cut uh, packs will just have flat items, okay? So there's a difference there, okay? I don't know if too many manufacturers do ephemera packs anymore. Now they're basically called die cuts and they're just, because, you know, it's cheaper <laughs> just to do the flat die cuts rather than add the lump and the bump okay so we're going to talk about a few different ways and some of this may be elementary for some of you long time scrapbookers but we have to show the new gals how to do things because someone had to once show us correct and so that's what we're going to do and then i'm going to show a couple different ways i do them because i'm all over the board when it comes to this product because i use it in a variety of ways and then also i will show how i have some in books and also some binders okay so we'll talk about and we're actually going to sit down and do one because there's a little couple of little tips and tricks i've learned because i've been doing it this way for several years okay so let's get started so first of all they come in these packs so when you bring them into your inventory and i just want to clarify something i say inventory because that is my term that i use for my stash does that mean everybody has to use that word no does that mean it's the correct word no it's just what i use because in my world and in my scrappy life my collection of supplies or my stash means a lot to me i have put a lot of money into it i've put a lot of time into it and i spend a lot of time in my space and also organizing my supplies so to me in my opinion and don't anybody throw any shade my way because i've heard a couple comments inventory is a word i use okay it's just my personal word okay because it means a lot to me and i think if you use the word inventory then you take your supplies to the next level where you don't just think they're die cut packs thrown in a pile it's inventory we take time buying it using it creating with it organizing it so why not give it a better word than just stash okay my opinion only okay so it's inventory <laughs> Yes, we catalog it, right? So why not call it inventory? Absolutely. And I know some other people had thought, yes, the word inventory does make you think of your supplies in a different manner. Again, it's a thought process. Yes. So let's get started. Yes, we love these things. Now, let's see. Let's, where do we start first? Okay, so when you bring a pack in to your inventory before I went on the rabbit hole. I went down the rabbit hole. Okay, so you can simply leave them as they are, put them in a pretty bin or a basket, okay, and just leave them that way. But then what happens over time is that these cellophane packs will rip, especially on this side when you're getting them in and out, in and out, in and out, because these were not made as a permanent solution to keep these in. This is just packaging material, okay? So over time, and we all know this, you have to eventually transition to something else, okay? It would be nice if they held up, um, but they don't. Okay, so then a very quick and affordable solution is to simply take them out of this package, okay? Just like this. And you would take the packaging, you know, the marketing info, and you would cut it down if need be, and you would put them in a sandwich bag. I mean, talk about affordable. 
Yes, and I'm right there. You already got your collection information there, okay? Because some of you gals are on design teams and you need to know what's up. Yes, put your embellishments on the opposite side of that. And there you have the same thing as you bought them in. It's per collection, it's per manufacturer, and then there's your info, okay? Now, that is just a very affordable way. And then you say, what do you do with that? Again, a basket or bin, or if you have a lot of these, and this is what I did for years, a couple years, is that I would just keep them in a photo box, okay? That worked very well for me for a long time, okay? Especially if you're someone that likes your collection to stay together. And I'm someone in my own style. When I bring new things in like this, I do want it to stay in this collection form until I've played with it a little bit, okay? Because, you know, sometimes you buy a few papers to go with a collection, okay? So very affordable, just sandwich bags, again. And then again, you know, that's just one quick way. And you can get a lot of these uh, sandwich bag embellishment packs in a photo box. You'd be surprised how many you can fit in there. Okay. Now, the reason I grew out of that is because I grew out of that. Because I ended up getting too many. So then, another solution. Okay. And I'm still using that same pack. Is that you could go another step further. And you could put them in such things as Avery L pockets or any type of envelope system like this. And you can find different sizes on Amazon. Now, this is the same Avery L pocket that I put my dies in. So if you already have some, you could try this system out. You know, maybe just do four or five packs of these at once and see how you like it. This is definitely a sturdier and much cleaner looking storage system than the packaging they come in and also the sandwich bags. It depends on what you want. There is no right or wrong way. Okay, now this is, you know, a little bit bigger than you need, but it's definitely going to give you the space you need for something bigger like this. So again, especially where's the, where's the Maggie Holmes one? You know, sometimes those get kind of big, okay? But then the only concern you have with this is that in this Maggie Holmes uh, die cut pack, see how there's buttons and stars? They're going to come out of that. So you have to take that in consideration. Or you can just put on the back, use some washi, and you could seal it that way. So again, another choice. Okay? So that's an option. And again, I'll have a link below for these Avery L pockets. And then also, too, there's a, a style you can get on Amazon that's not Avery L, but it's basically the same size. And they're supposed to be about the same type of quality. But Avery L, you just can't go wrong with them. I really, really like them. And then another option would be is that the storage photo cases. Okay, this is the four by six size. So again, what you would do, that fits right in there. Okay, and you could put a couple collections in there. Say if you had, like for this Kaiser Craft, I have two collections, but it's the same manufacturer. You may have no trouble mixing both of those. Or maybe you just want to do one box just of red, one box of yellow, that type of thing. Okay, so it's totally a preference. Okay, now this would be good, say just for that Maggie Holmes. This would be a good size, and then also, too, it has a good closure, and then you wouldn't have to worry about losing any of these uh, actual ephemera pieces that was in this pack. Okay, and this is from the carousel pack. Okay, so that's another option. Okay, so what else could we do? I think, oh, one more. Oh, I'm trying to snap that back. There we go. So then another option is, is you could actually open just a few packs, put them in like a little dish or a bowl, and that is what you work from for the next you know, month or two and put it on your desk. The only trouble with that is, is that you have to worry about dust. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually some dust in there. And that's what happens. So if you get a dusty bowl, you're going to have dusty die cuts. Okay. And so who wants that? So that is something you do have to consider. Okay. Is the dust. Okay. So now let's show another option. Okay, so let me move some of these. Yes, yes. And if you have a favorite company that makes your die cuts, you have just a slight obsession with a certain one, list it below. <laughs> yes, okay. Now, what another choice you can do is that you can take a composition book, and this is just one from the Dollar Tree. Okay, and this has been floating around for several years, and you simply can take just a dollar. I mean, how affordable is a dollar? <laughs> yes, and I look how many I have in here. Yeah, that's a lot. Now, this is just my Kaiser Craft book. Okay, and why do I have this in a book rather than a binder? Um, do you want the truth of it? I have too many. 
Yes, and then also, you know, what I say is because I take it when I travel, which I do, but yeah, it's my Kaiser Craft ones. <laughs> yeah, I kind of go a little nuts with buying my Kaiser Craft, okay? But then I'll show you I have another one of these, okay? So there's different ways you can do it. There is just no wrong way. And so then how do you do this? Because this is just, honestly, composition paper. It's nothing of great quality. It's very thin, okay? So what you would do... And this, again, this is just what I have for some Kaiser craft. Let me just look at the colors. Love, love, love. Okay. And again, this is a Kaiser craft pack here. So if I, and this is something that's just not old to my inventory, to my space. So I'm leaving it as a pack. But if I wanted to, when I'm done playing with it, I would come in here and I would put these in here simply and I would keep the collection. And it doesn't matter if it takes two pages or three pages, four. I just keep going in the book. This is a very affordable, space-saving way to do it. Now, the only expense you have is what you need to put them in this book with. And that would be, and you would use mounting squares, okay? Now, you could use re repositional adhesive, but if you have several of these, that wouldn't be cost-effective for your adhesive. But you, if you only have a small amount, say 10 or 12 packs, repositional adhesive, if you already have it, you might as well use it, okay? But now, I had a lot of these left over from the days when I was doing doing consulting work. And, you know, I was a consultant for a couple different companies, so I had quite a few of these actually in my stock. And so I just used these, okay? And I'm going to open this up, and we're actually going to do this, okay? And what these are is just mounting squares and that's what they're called double-sided double-sided mounting squares now this one is 250 pieces per box now i got this at michael's and i got this because i wanted to actually show because people had asked me what is this product because we do have some new scrapbookers to the game yes don't we love that okay now you can actually leave it in this box and dispense it that way i don't have the patience for that <laughs> no i take it out of the box Okay, and so then what you would do, okay, is that the quickest way is just flip them over, and they don't have to be in any particular way you want them. Flip them over, okay, and say I had these flipped over on both pages, and I'm just going to do a couple here, okay, and I would do that on both sides. I would flip these over, and you'd have the white. Okay, just arrange them like that, and then you would start adhering. Okay, now this is what how big the square is. Okay, that's how big the square is. That doesn't mean you have to use it in that size. You can definitely rip them in half, and then just putting put them on the back of your die cut. Now, some people would say, "Well, this is going to take some time." Yes, it is, but this is one of those things where you're cataloging your product. That's exactly what you're doing. Because, now I wouldn't do these one at a time, okay? As far as taking these off. I would take a few of these off at a time and I would have them on my hand and that's the way I would do it, okay? So again, you could just cut that in half, rip it in half, I should say. Put that there, bing, bang, boom, you're done. And then just keep loading up your page, okay? You don't have to use it as a whole because you don't need, it's not going to be stuck permanently, okay? This You just want to put it on here. And then someone say, well, they're going to get stuck on the paper. So pretend I had that all done, okay? And it looks like I'd probably have to go to two, four, you know, I'd have to use four sheets, okay? I want to get back to these in a minute. But again, with some of these bigger pieces, you could get away with putting one in the middle and calling it good. Yes, and don't be afraid you can layer some because, you know, you don't have adhesive on all of that. Okay, so that's how you do that. Okay, and pretend that was all done. Okay, and so say I wanted this. What do I do? I pull that up. Now, does it rip some paper up? Yes, but it doesn't matter because you're going to have to put adhesive on it anyways. Okay, and then chances are you won't be loading this back up when you're done with it. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it leaves a hole. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of piece of there, paper there. And if you pull one out and you didn't want it, what do you do? Simply go back and, re and repeat the process. That's exactly what you do. Yes. Okay, so that is a very affordable way. Now, does it take time to put them in this book? Yes, but it's one of those things you do when you're watching a movie or you want to do something crafty, but yeah, you don't feel like scrapbooking. This is how you do it. I mean, this is just a dollar. 
at the Dollar Tree for a composition book or Walmart. And right now, school sales are going on. You can get them for 88 cents. Now that's affordable. And then these mounting squares. In this box I got at Michael's, was it was $250 to a box. And how much did that cost? It cost $2.59 for 250 squares. But I'm going to say right off the bat, you're going to need more than these than you think. So buy one more box than you think you're going to need, okay? Definitely buy at least two boxes to start out with because you're going to go through them quicker than you think. Now, it is a more affordable because it comes in a 250 box, a 500 count box, and a 750 count box. The cheapest way to buy these is if you bought the 750 box and, of course, use a coupon. But if you didn't have a coupon, the cheapest one to get is the 500 count by just a couple pennies, a couple half a pennies more. So the 500 count, and which is $3.99, that is the cheapest unless you're using a coupon. Okay? So if you're using a coupon, definitely get the 750 count. Okay? And so and I'll show you what actually I still have. I have rolls. These were in Herma, the Herma Fix <laughs> from way back in the day. And I have rolls of these. And so I just peel these off and that's what I do. Just peel them and go. Okay, that's what I use. But this is the same, same system. Okay, the same exact thing. Okay, so if you want to do it in the book, again, so affordable. And again, school sales are going on right now. So look at getting that. Okay. And you probably already have some, that's what I had. I already had these. And so you could do this and this is just my Kaiser craft ones. Okay. But you could do this just for, if you like me, I have a manufacturer that I really enjoy their die cuts. You could do this just for them. Okay. Or you could do a book and then you just have them per collection regardless of the manufacturer so right there's uh, we are memory keepers what do we have here simple stories yes and then we have chamel what do we have next we have chamel love chamel <laughs> pebbles jelly bean soup jelly bean soup and so pebbles and then we have maggie holmes maggie holmes you see what i'm saying it doesn't, this is just collection, but it's different manufacturers, okay? So, I went with that because I wanted to keep them with collection. My other one, I want Kaiser Craft together. And then also, too, if I'm, if I'm traveling, this is, I can just grab one of these books. I have a variety. And then also, too, when I sit down and I do Bible journaling, I love to grab one of these books, specifically my Kaiser Craft one. I use this a lot in my Bible journaling, so I definitely wanted these in their own book. It's just easier for me to grab that than to grab a couple of my binders. Okay, so these are the books. Now I'm showing different ways and you can do it any way you want. Okay, I'm just showing different options and there are times where I, in my space, I have them like this and then sometimes if I'm working with a kit, they're in this. Sometimes, well, I already showed you, I do have some that's in sandwich bags. Okay, and then I just showed you the books. And now I'm going to show you the binder. <laughs> yes. So I have them in a variety of ways because I use them in a variety of ways. And see, and I also have some in a bowl. Yes, I was in my Rascog. So I, I'm, it's one of those things. I'm, it's not a one for all. Okay, so let's go through the binders. Now, this was binders that I had showed, yes, last week. It was last week because this is the same setup. Excuse me, I have to get a drink. this is the same setup as my stickers okay and then there's my die cuts and then there was my chipboard now last week I had shown my stickers and my chipboard and I wanted to show the die cuts this week because in our summer space shape up that's what we were talking about this week we were talking about dies and die cuts and so you're more than welcome to go hop over on that playlist and see what we were doing in our summer space shape up so there's the stickers and so here are die cuts and so what is that it is just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that i had put through the three ring bind hole punch and I, it's the same way as those books it's the exact same thing so if you look i take this jelly bean soup it was just one of those squares okay these are a little easier for me to manage okay stack that on there it's on the paper and then you say okay well if you pull one up you're gonna rip some paper yes and that's what you have 
Okay, it might rip some of the paper here. It might rip some of the die cut back there. That's, I mean, it's just not a big deal. It's not an issue for me because, like I said, you're going to have to put adhesive on it anyways. Now, when you're taking these off, this isn't one of those supplies. If you want to do it this way, not everybody's going to like it this way. Okay, there's a big advantage to it because I can look if I want a yellow die cut. Instead of me having to go through eight or nine different packs of these or six different boxes of these or get all those sandwich bags out i can just go through and then i well actually a majority of my die cuts is right there and you can see i have everything from flowers to butterfly to whatever so this is what i don't it's not collection that's not manufacture this is just simply my die cuts okay now what i wanted to say when you're doing something like this this isn't one of those things you're just going to rip off real quick. Now, you have to be a little gentle with it. You know, see, there it didn't rip any off, okay? So you want to be a little gentle. You're not going to be playing tug of war with your die cuts. No, we love our die cuts, okay? So that's my yellow, okay? Now, in last week's videos, and I probably will put it in the description box below, I will list the colors of my color binders, but each color binder is set up the same way and you can go back to last week's uh, summer space shape up or I'll have the videos linked below for my stickers and die cuts if you want to see the entire binder because each one of my binders is stickers and then die cuts and then chipboard according by color now not everybody likes to organize by color and if you don't I say don't do it no if you don't want your collection packs if you want them to stay as a collection, then put them in a better packaging or, you know, you can go through the time because I will say that right now. It does take time. But for me, for the amount that I had, I wanted to see them quickly. Okay. And I organize or I scrap by color. So I wanted my supplies organized by color. So again, there we have turquoise and there's my stickers. And then right there's all my die cuts. Okay same thing and you can see how many I've used the empty spaces okay now, I did these a few years ago okay so I was trying to see if I had a turquoise yeah, right here I have a turquoise how quick is that <laughs> and I would just stick that right in there again it's the same thing I'm just using one of those mounting squares this is the same thing I just have them on a roll and I just put it right there I can put it anywhere I want yes do I have another one? Oh, I have a butterfly <laughs> And I would tell you, it goes quicker than you think, especially. And again, you can rip them in half. You don't have to have a use a whole one. Sometimes I've even ripped them in fours. Yes, in four pieces. You do not have to use a whole square. You can rip them in half, rip them in quarters, whatever you choose to do. Okay. And so you're saying, well, these mounting squares, that's not a temporary adhesive. No, it's not. Okay. Now... I would tell you, if you're someone who likes to scrap by color, I mean, just look at the choices. And this is what I use a lot when I'm making my clusters, okay? I just love this. Again, is this for everybody? No. This is just an option, and some of my subscribers had asked to see it, and that's why I'm showing it. Yes, because I love my subscribers. Hmm. Yes. My subscribers could ask me to show anything, and I'll do whatever they ask me because I love them that much. They're that kind to me. Okay, now this is a multicolor, okay? Again, this setup is the same. It is stickers, okay, die cuts, and chipboard, okay? Now, in my multicolor, let's go to the die cuts. You can see that I have some of these by theme. Right here is birthday. This is jelly bean soup. This is birthday. And then what else do I have? There's more birthday. And then these are just a variety. I think this is just basically uh, words. And these are like signs. Again, like vintage signs. And then so, see how I kept some of those by collection? Yes, you can absolutely do that. And I put these in multi because sometimes, oh, here's a summer theme. Now see, I could have put that in red. I could have put that in watermelon, but I wanted to keep them by collection and I just didn't want to divvy them up. But see, there's some, you know, childhood vintage. Okay. So I just, and there, okay, there's my Americana. What else do I have? There's some sports, very little amount of sports. And this is just some floral. 
because frankly I have a multicolor section because there's just some things I just don't know where to put it okay now I will tell you that some people say you should not have a multicolor section in your crafting and scrapbooking space because that's considered a miscellaneous to me it's not because I just where am I going to put it? So in my multi, I also have some collections as well. These are older ones. Okay. So I think that is all for my die cuts. I'm trying to look on my notes here. Now, if you have any questions, please list them in the comment section below. I will always go back and read the comments because I love to help people and I love to chat. So, and also... If you have a certain way that you organize your die cuts and it's working for you, please share below. <laughs> and if you have any questions on where to get some of this materials as far, and I will, I will link, I will link for the Avery L pockets and also the substitution for Avery L if you're interested in that. And these mounting squares, you can just find them at Michael's Hobby Lobby, that type of thing. Try to use a coupon if you're getting the bigger, bigger package packaging and then some of you may already have these because you know if you're a long time scrapbooker or crafter we have a variety of adhesives so look what you have in your inventory first that may work for this type of thing if you have a lot of the repositional adhesive because at one time we all use that you could definitely use it for that too yes okay so i think that's all i have for showing die cuts they're not as evolved as stickers <laughs> and chipboard because basically you're just putting something on the back sticking it on a sheet or in a book or on a binder and you're calling it good or you skip that process you put it in an envelope you put in a storage container or you put them in a baggie or you put them in like a little bin completely up to you and as you can see in my space i have it all going on <laughs> Yes, I have a variety of ways because I do make a lot of page kits. So I don't want everything by color. I don't want everything by manufacturer and I don't want everything by color. Okay, so that's all I have for organizing die cuts. And again, please share below if you have a way that's working for you because I'm sure you probably have a way I didn't even think about yet. Yes, that is the beauty of sharing and learning from each other. Okay, so that's all I have for today and that's all for RTS. And you know what that means. Come back because you never know what we're gonna learn. Bye.